Facebook. So if you want to join me and you are a woman, you can feel free to come on over to the Facebook world. You can send me a DM, I think, through Twitter some kind of way, and I can get you connected over here. But ladies, for you who are here with me on Facebook, I am excited about our message for today. I am, really, I am. Hopefully, I'm still alive. Let me double check. Make sure I'm in the right place because yesterday I was talking for a long time. Well, it wasn't yesterday, whatever day it was. Um, I was talking for a long time and no one could hear me. So I want to make sure you can hear me, okay? So hold on. I'm going to actually have double Thanks volume. Today. I am. Okay, really, perfect. Am. So you can. So I'm excited about our message today. And I'm coming out of a very familiar passage. And I was on the phone today talking to someone. And when I got off the phone, I was like, well, Tasha, you had a whole lot of confidence in that particular situation for somebody else. And so the name of our thing for today is I need to believe for me. I need to believe for me. So let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Then we'll jump into our passage and then I'll talk to you about what I'm learning today. And then hopefully it will bless you because it blessed me and not because I'm sharing it, but because you can go back. You know what I realized? I've got this thing all over my face. Let me turn it down like this. Um, not just because I'm saying it, but because you can go into the word of God for yourself and you can read this same exact passage and see how is the Holy Spirit speaking to you in that moment when you read this scripture. And so, dear God, we thank you so much for giving us another day. We are so grateful for that. Dear God, I thank you so much for the living word and the awareness that the Holy Spirit gives you in real time when you are not responding and showing up in a way that you have already commissioned us to. So I pray that as the women hear this message, as people hear this message today, that they go into the word of God, they read it for themselves and see how you're speaking to their hearts through the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that they can navigate through this thing called life life in the best version that you would have them to be so that they are glorifying you and they are investing in the kingdom and doing kingdom work. We thank you for all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen. So I was um, on the phone, like I was mentioning earlier, to a vendor, and this vendor was going through all of these excuses on why they couldn't do something for me. And I was just like, listen, I know what I'm really good at, and if you would do X for me, I can guarantee, do you hear what what, what decisiveness, I, decisiveness I said? I said, I can guarantee you that one thing I am excellent in is managing people through crazy situations. I said, I can guarantee you, if you will do this for me, I can guarantee that. And after I got off the phone, it was like the Holy Spirit, Spirit just like slapped me in the head. And we know that the word of God says that it is a double-edged sword. It cuts going in and cuts coming out. And what I was thinking about is how I navigate through absolutes when it comes to my role in a certain places. A, my role as a mom, I will definitely speak in absolutes if I am advocating for one of my kids, if I'm trying to encourage one of my children, or I'm just trying to coach them through a process, I will speak in such confidence and de decisiveness, knowing that God will not let me down. And what the Holy Spirit reminded me of is that same courage that you have for your children, the same confidence that you speak in and confidence of the relationship that you have with your husband, the same confidence that you have when you're coaching someone else. I need you to believe today for yourself with the same level of authority. I need you to believe for yourself with the same level of authority. And so the scriptural reference that I'm using for today's passage actually comes out of uh, Mark. And it is Mark, the ninth verse, starting in the 14th passage. It is Mark, the ninth verse, starting in the 14th passage. And so you're going to have to hang on one second because I want to make sure you can see that text over here when we're speaking it. So hang on one moment so I can go ahead and make sure that you can see that passage. So it is Mark 9, starting in the 14th, and it's out of the NIV translation. As soon as I see it come up, then I'll pop it over here in our screen. Let me double check. Ah! I'll pop it up over in our screen. And so I was excited. I was really excited. Hey, Sam, thanks for joining. See my new makeup today? The lipstick, the face stuff that you gave, that you, uh, that I bought from you. But anyways, um, so as I was reading this passage, I was just reminded that, Latasha, you need to have 
this same confidence, this same exact confidence, if not more. And so the scriptural reference that God gave me was out of Mark, the ninth chapter, starting in the 14th verse. And it says, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teacher of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnaws at his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. So listen to this passage, remembering that we are in the new chapter, meaning that grace is is here like this is the place where the disciples should be doing work with Jesus okay the disciples are supposed to be able to do work with Jesus and this is what they said it says oh unbelieving generation Jesus replied how long shall I stay with you how long shall I put up with you bring the boy to me now this is Jesus not sounding like he's in a happy space sounding like he's quite frankly very frustrated with the process at hand because he's like, look, y'all are my crew. You have the authority to do things. You need to have the confidence in the, the skills and the gifting that I gave you. So when he's saying this, they're like arguing and bantering back and forth instead of focusing on the situation at hand. And that is like a whole nother message that the Holy Spirit has given me for another day. But they are bantering back and forth instead of doing the work. And so Jesus says, bring the boy to me. Let me show you how this goes down. It says, so they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked, asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? The man replies, from childhood. He answered, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help, him, help us. If you can, Jesus said, like, you, how are you going to ask Jesus to help you through something? The Savior himself, the ultimate prophet, the one who has come to save us from our sins. How are you going to ask him with a question in your voice? Any of y'all give me a number one. If you ever ask God for something with a questioning as if he couldn't do it, if we forgot that all things are possible to those who believe, anybody out there with me or am I alone? Because I know. I know what I learned today is the confidence that I will have for my kids, the confidence I will have in somebody else's vision, the confidence that I will pray for somebody else. And when it comes to me, I keep asking myself, Latasha, if you believe with that authority, why are you showing up like this man right here asking if you can? Or sometimes we go to Jesus, if you will, if you can hear me, he can hear you. But we're not walking and asking in the authority that he has given us when he said in his word that we will do greater things. So if we can do greater things, there's nothing that we should be asking God for if the motivation of our heart is right, not believing that something's going to happen. Now, how it happens and what happens may not be exactly how we want the return on our investment, but understanding that God is working something out in the spiritual realm, we need to ask with confidence. The word of God says, you know, we don't want unwavering faith. You show up as double-minded, unstable in all our ways, and we don't want that, and it's kind of like this father. So he says, if you can, <laughs> Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. He even says it here. Everything is possible for him who believes. And immediately, not tomorrow, not five seconds, but immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Any of y'all feeling like there's just something that you know God has called you to, and there's just this itty bitty unbelief, and you don't even know where it comes from because when you speak, you know enough scripture. You understand that we serve a sovereign God. You understand that God is our, Jesus is our, he is our Jehovah Jireh. He is sovereign. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He can do anything, however he wants. Even the spirits tremble. Like all of, we know these things. 
But yet when we're showing up in the world, we're not always showing up with the confidence that he says. And he said, and I love the man's honesty. Like, okay, if we're going to keep it real, like I love his honesty. Because there are times that I won't ask with the confidence because there's some story I'm telling myself in my head that either, you know, this isn't worthy of a com confidential ask because it's for me. And what would I really ask for because I'm blessed and highly favored and, 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 and everything seems all as well and I really don't have any real problems? That's, God don't have any of this backdrop that I just started spewing out of my mouth. That's not the way God works. What he wants us to do is to believe with unwavering faith. He says, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. He said, you deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you come out of him and never enter him again. Do you hear the confidence in which Jesus is speaking? He said the spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up to his feet. And, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Now they're trying to figure something out. They're like, so we see it could be done with you, Jesus. We got just a little question, right? We need some remedial help. And he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. And he said to them, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant, and they were afraid to ask him about it because they had just come out of something that was serious business. And so this is what my challenge is for you today. If you are one of these people that's still struggling, and it feels like you're showing up with unwavering faith, what I also love about this passage is that when they ask the question, why couldn't it come out? He said, this kind can come out only by prayer understand that even in times when we're struggling with something and we don't even know how to ask or we're struggling with the story in our minds what God is trying to help us with is is that there's a passage that says when we don't know what to pray we can just moan we can just cry out the name of Jesus and because he's a sovereign God understanding the motivation of our heart understanding what it is that we need and what it is that we're asking for even when man can't understand if we go with the right motivation and truly believe that what we're asking for is so important we need to have the confidence to understand that he will take care of the situation jesus will take care of the situation but the only way we can have this authority and we can have this power is we have had to accept him into our hearts and so today i'm on multiple platforms and i'm doing what i've done before and what i'm trying to end out each night is this or each time i'm speaking is that if you don't know who jesus is all the information and the authority and the power and the Holy Spirit that I was just talking about, it means nothing to you. Why does it mean nothing to you? Because although Jesus even understands you, if you reject him, you don't have the grace and you don't get the luxury and the privilege to be a part of our kingdom family because you're rejecting God or you just don't know who Jesus is and it's not that complicated. So inbox me if you need to get your spirit situation correct. But for those of you who profess to be believers and who profess to say that I have accepted Jesus into my heart and you understand that we are in a season of grace and we are in a season where we no longer need broker faith, meaning that we don't need a person to go on our behalf to Jesus we can go to him directly ourselves and we can ask him directly ourselves and when we don't know how to pray we can use the word of God to pray because when we pray his word his promises can't fail because the word never lies the word never lies and so where I am right now is I'm asking myself and this is going to be some intentional prayer this week is why I need to get the same confidence and belief that I have that I use when I'm coaching clients when I'm advocating for my kids or when I'm pouring and connecting and believing someone else's vision where they know that they've heard from God I need to have that same belief for myself that unwavering faith that I say it I believe it and I behave like I believe I was talking to someone 
someone yesterday, I said, I need to declare it and then just do something. Do something that shows the behavior of Christ. I know for me right now, God is telling me to give some stuff away, like to give stuff away. So now is the season that you want to connect with me because he's really in a place where he's asking me to give away some things that are could help people. And I'm just like, okay, God, I don't really understand that, but I'm not questioning what the Holy Spirit speaks because I know it speaks clearly to me. So I am excited about this. I'm excited about whatever it is that God is doing in the midst of this moment. I just want to be obedient to him. If there's anyone out there that needs a word of prayer, please inbox me because I know that the power of prayer works. Last week was such a refreshing week for me for so many reasons, but I know we serve a good God. So dear God, we just thank you today. We thank you today because you are an awesome God. I pray that if any person under the sound of my voice is struggling with belief for themselves, they're always the cheerleader for somebody else. They're always praying and connecting and agreeing with someone else's vision and plans and purpose, but it's difficult for their own stuff. I pray that they have the confidence and not my word, but what your word says, dear God, that they, that you help them with their unbelief in areas. You bring to their awareness, their unbelief that they may not even realize that they have because it's buried so far down in the biblical language that they know how to spew out on autopilot, that they don't even realize that there's some stuff going on and that they're blocking it because of pride. They're blocking it because they're not truly, truly acting and behaving like they believe. So dear God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray right now, dear God, in the name of Jesus right now that we can have this confidence in the missions and the situations that you have put us in charge of, that you have called us to lead. We ask you for these things in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I will see you ladies tomorrow. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.